right now we're looking ahead to 2025 because you know what what's the best way to keep a dynasty <laughs> league active then start thinking about next year nate isn't that what we love to do it's true i mean we can't get enough of next year it's always about next year nate who are you taking first overall in our 2025 first round rookie mock draft I'm taking Luther Burden here. And I don't think that's going to be too controversial. Maybe nope. by the time we get around to the actual draft, maybe there's a different position here. Maybe there's a quarterback. Maybe there's a running back here at this spot, um, depending on how the draft goes. But at this point, I am most confident about Luther Burden developing into one of the best, one of the better wide receivers in the NFL. And I feel more strong about his ability and his talent level uh, than anyone else. And Luther Burden, he had a pretty productive uh, freshman year with, with Missouri. But then last year, his sophomore year, that is when we really saw him develop into that all-around wide receiver. Uh, his freshman year got a lot of opportunities around the line of scrimmage, you know, give him the ability to use the yak ability that he has. But then last year, he had almost 1,200 yards. He had 83 receptions, almost 120 targets, eight touchdowns. This guy became one of the best wide receivers in the nation in a year that Marvin Harrison Jr. was playing, in a year that Romo Dunze was playing, in a year that Malik Neighbors was playing. Luther Burden was just about up there with those guys as one of the best wide receivers in the country. Uh, he's probably going to be a top five pick next year, top 10 certainly uh, with the value at the wide receiver position currently. This guy knows how to get open. He knows how to be physical after the catch, and he also can win at the catch point. He fits all three of those areas that I want to see in a wide receiver. He does them all at a high level, and he's continuing to get better and better. He's got his quarterback coming back this year, Brady Cook, um, who you know might not be the, the best quarterback in the nation, but a very good college cool. quarterback. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and he has a good connection with Luther Burden. I think they have a – a chance to be the best wide receiver quarterback connection in the league this year. Uh, I could see Burden hitting 1,500 yards this year. And if he does that, there'll be no doubt uh, that this guy should, you know, could be worth the 101 in your dynasty league next year. And I expect him to, you know, come into the league probably as a top 12 wide receiver. You know, as we saw Marvin Harrison Jr. come into the league and he came in pretty much at wide receiver six, seven, eight. Um, Malik Neighbors is already in the top 12. Um, for for some rankings uh, based off his training camp reports. So I fully expect Luther Burden to hit similar uh, marks as Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunes they have this year and the hype and how much we've loved them. We'll see what the quarterback situation looks like. We'll see what the running backs look like, but you can't go wrong with Luther Burden. So I guess I'm going quarterback here, Nate. I'm going to go with Carson Beck, a guy who I think is going to mm -hmm. um, kind of establish himself as the quarterback one of this class it's going to be a really interesting quarterback class um there's a lot of people talking up Shador Sanders this early in the offseason and I get it I see some good things there I see a little bit of a lack of processing Carson Beck does not have a, the inability to process this is a guy running a pretty similar to a pro style offense at Georgia and you know I kind of wonder what those championship teams that had Stetson Bennett would have looked like with Carson Beck, a guy who I think has an arm that's a little bit livelier. But hey, man, Stetson Bennett, the guy, the guy was a gamer. You know, he would always put himself on the line. He did whatever the team needed him to do to win. So, you know, nothing against him. I'm just curious what it would have looked like with a bit of an upgrade. Um, he's accurate, and he's, he's a little bit more mobile than I expected him to be going into it. You look at his size and his frame, I'm like, there's no way this guy can move. He's going to look like Drew Bledsoe back there. <laughs> and I'm not saying he's got wheels on him, but he can move away from these guys and he can he can keep the play alive long enough for one of his receivers to get open. So right now, planting my flag, he is the quarterback one of this class that, again, I still have a lot of question marks on. Nate, let's kick it to you, to the 103. You are high on this guy. I need to dig in a little bit more. We got some studs at the top. I got Ted McMillan here at the 103 coming off the board. Uh, Ted McMillan at six foot five, two hundred and. 15 or so pounds gives me Mike Evans vibes. I've talked about that a couple of different times over the past couple of years. This guy, he has the ability to win down the field really, really well. Um, he also you know, took that second year jump. And this is a guy that has 700 years his freshman year, um, 700 yards his freshman year uh, with Arizona. Last year, stepped it up, had over 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns. Also saw um, just about almost 120 targets. So this, this is another top wide receiver in the nation. McMillan, unfortunately, 
is injured at the moment, so he might have a slow start to this year. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, it might allow other players to surpass him. Um, but still, at the end of the day, McMillan is a very, very, very talented wide receiver. Um, I love what he's able to do. And just because he's big and lanky does not mean he doesn't know how to separate. Um, he, he gets open very well. Uh, and still has some of the yak ability. I uh, did average 5.7 yards after the catch per reception last year. Um, usually with these the more contested catch focus guys, you see that like around three or four. Um, so getting close to six is kind of what we're looking for usually. And and he's just about there. So I really like what I've seen from McMillan so far in his career. I'm looking forward to another year with him. I don't know if he'll be the 103 or not. I think the running backs might move their way up the board once we have the draft fall. But there's also a lot of them. So you might have the option to wait. Yeah. And you may want to pick up a guy like McMillan before the wide receiver depth starts to move out a little bit. I'm going to go running back right here, and I'm going to take Ohio State's very own Quinchon Judkins. What we know about Quinchon Judkins is power, 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 power. Now, his teammate Travion Henderson is a better receiver, but that's not a knock on Quinchon Judkins' receiving ability. Travion Henderson is just a really good receiving back, in my opinion. I do think, however that Quinchon Judkins has better vision and power through the line than Travion Henderson, which is why I took him over Travion. That being said, I think either of these guys are going to be um, really productive in the NFL. So right now he's my running back one. There's a lot of things that could change between now and then. Um, I think he's probably going to go somewhere too and be a starting running back really close to off the rip. I'm not saying he's the next Bijan, but I could see him – Maybe almost being talked about in, in that in that level, possibly. But there's a lot of things that have to get sorted out between now and next March. So, Nate, you are up then with the 105. At the 105, I'm going to go ahead and take his uh, backfield mate in Travion Henderson. You talked about really good pass catcher. Uh, he's got good speed. I think he's a little bit faster uh, than Quinchot John Kids. He's got a better long speed, can finish off those big runs. Um, and he's also got the, the power. Maybe he's not quite as big and strong as Quinchon Judkins, but there's a lot of power packed into Travion Henderson's frame. Um, sometimes too much. I, you know, his running style can be pretty aggressive. And with that, he has faced injury before because of that. He's also injured defensive players uh, with his running style. Um, so he might need to, you know, just bring that back a little bit once he gets to the NFL just to protect his body, uh, make sure his availability looks good. But he shouldn't have any problems with that this year. Uh, sharing the backfield with Judkins should keep him healthy, should keep him efficient, and set him up for a really good season going into the NFL draft where, you know, we haven't had the running backs, you know, this past year that we were really hoping for. And this coming year, you know, we've already selected two, and we have a couple more to go off the board here in the first round. And I think, you know, Judkins – has a great chance to be their RB1. I think Henderson has a chance to be the RB1. I think there's like three other guys, three or four other guys that could be the RB1 in this draft. It's a huge season for these running backs. And it's actually kind of funny that we have two of them that are in the back, you know, the same backfield uh, vying for a national championship with Ohio State. So I'm really excited to see how this running back class kind of works itself out because there's so much talent and – Judkins and Henderson are just the icing on the cake. Well, Nate, I guess I finally get to get my first wide receiver of this mock draft. I'm going to Oregon to get Evan Stewart. I like Evan Stewart. I do have one question about Evan Stewart, and that's his separating ability. I'd like to see a little bit more separation from Evan Stewart. That being said, I loved his route running, and I love his physicality at the catch point. These things, especially physicality, these guys that are put out on the perimeter, they need to be able to go up against these defensive backs. They're one on one. They don't have anybody else. They're on an island. You got to be able to push these guys around. Evan Stewart can do that. I'm really excited to see what he could do in the Oregon offense. Would have been cool to see him play with Bo Nix, but that's not where we're at. Tez Johnson's out there as well. Tez Johnson projects to me like an NFL slot wide receiver. So I'm excited to see what Evan Stewart can do. Nate, do you have anything to add on about Evan Stewart? You know, he, he came from Texas A&M. They had a lot of struggles over there with the offense. I'm very excited to see what he can do at Oregon. Um, he's got all the talent in the world. Hasn't really put it together yet. Hasn't had that consistency. Oregon's the best place for him to do that. But – He's also got a really good wide receiver uh, running mate over there in Tez Johnson. And it's going to actually be, you know, a bit of a challenge to be the best wide receiver on that team. So just something to keep in mind. I'm going back to the running back position and picking up Ollie Gordon, uh, who was arguably the best running back in college football last year. Got some Heisman votes for his performance. He had about five or six 200-yard games last year. Ollie Gordon had an incredible year last year. 
Uh, did have 33 receptions for 272 yards, so he also can catch the ball. But the rushing, that's what really came into account. Had 50, over 1,500 yards last year at 6.4 yards per carry. 20 touchdowns, Mike. This guy knows how to find the end zone. He did only have two. I did say like five or six 200 games. I was exaggerating. So um, only but, had two. Only. <laughs> only had two, but he did have uh, eight games over 100, uh, 100 yards and six over 100, five over 150. So big yardage in many big games. Um, one of those games, 282 yards against West Virginia with four touchdowns. The next week, 271 yards and two touchdowns. So in a two-week period, Ollie Gordon ran for almost 600 yards and six touchdowns. That's this guy is one of the better running slow. backs. He, he does everything. And Oklahoma State runs their offense through him. I think he's going to be, you know, certainly a day two pick next year. If he can somehow improve upon the season he just had, maybe a, even a first rounder. Like I said before, the RB1 spot in this draft class is wide open. There are so many good running backs in this draft class, legitimately five or six guys that can compete for the RB1 position. Let's roll right into my next pick at the 108. I'm going with O'Marion Hampton from North mm -hmm. Carolina. I mean, this is a dude that just another guy who could potentially ascend to the top. Of the draft boards here. I mean, power. I, I do question his vision at the line a little bit. Just so strong. He has not the best long speed, which is why he's down here for me over a guy like Quinchon Judkins. Um, but in that 10 yard window that NFL teams really, really look for at the running back, he's very strong and, and fast in there. And he's a good receiving back as well. You know, with a guy that's built like him, just how how thick he is and stocky, you're like, this guy doesn't really look like uh, much of anything. I thought he caught the ball pretty well for a guy of his build that didn't really project to be a uh, receiving back. So I'm a big fan of Omari and Hampton. I've been watching him and kind of looking at him since last year. Um, you know, when we're watching Drake may let's go to the one Oh nine. What do you got? For yeah. You? At the one Oh nine, you were talking about a good pass catcher out of the backfield. This is a good pass catcher all around the field. Amika Egbuka. Uh, Emeka Igbuka, still trying to get the the pronunci the pronunciation uh, correct there. We're going to be working on it. We got a year to figure it out. We'll get it. We'll get, we'll get it. it. Uh, but another Ohio State wide receiver. What more do I really need to say? Um, Jeremiah Smith is going to be there this year, a true freshman who is going to knock it out of the park and be a big part of the offense right away. But Emeka Igbuka is the veteran there going into his senior year. Uh, Could have come out into the draft last year but unfortunately dealt with injury and missed a lot uh, of the season last year so after a sophomore season we had over a thousand yards nine touchdowns 66 receptions was only able to follow it up with uh 35 receptions 451 yards and four touchdowns last year because of those injuries but still when he was on the field very good wide receiver creates yards after the catch um very well is a great route runner as they always are out of ohio state and good size of 6'1 205 pounds he's not skinny um, not too big. I, you know, Emeka Ibuka, just another one of these pro ready wide receivers that Ohio state just knows how to spit out Brian Hartline doing great work down there. Yeah. And Ibuka's the next guy. I think he's probably a first rounder, um, more likely limited to the slot, um, at the next level. So that could push him down draft boards a little bit, but when we're talking fantasy football, we like wide receivers out of the slot with the one ten, I'm going with Isaiah bond now with Texas was with Alabama. Okay, say Bond, I love this guy. Great vertical routes. I'd like to see some more polish on his other routes, um, but he's definitely a good down the field, uh, field stretching guy. I thought he moved quite fluid as well, like no real twitchy jerky movements, um, and very strong at the catch point as well. Also love the ball tracking, which if you're a deep threat guy and you can't track the ball, what good are you? I don't think he was appropriately used in the Alabama offense. So hopefully going to Texas uh, with Steve Sarkeesian, I think is how it's said. Coach Sark. I know everyone call it, just Coach calls him Sark. Sark. We'll go with that. Um, you know, him with Quinn Ewers. So listen, you're, you're going to know if this guy can adjust for a bad pass now because Quinn Ewers makes those wide receivers work. The 111. So keep in mind, we talked about this player before. Just because we had him last on the list doesn't mean we hate him, YouTube commenters. But Nate, who do you got for us? Yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta pick my guy, the Boise State Bronco. You know, I'm a, I'm a closet Boise State fan. Love the the blue field. That you are. Uh, you can't go wrong with a blue field, man. But Ashton Genie, uh, Ashton Genty, he's the best receiving back 
in the nation right now. And I think that's pretty consensus. There is not a better receiver out of the backfield than him. Um, you know, you look at the stats, you see 38 receptions. Okay. Got 30 receptions. You're used to NFL stats of like CMC and these guys getting 70, 80 receptions in a year. But what he did with it was what was most impressive. He averaged 14.4 yards per reception out of the backfield, Mike. 38 receptions for 546 yards and five touchdowns for Boise State last year. Uh, did miss a little bit of time as well. Um, saw f- over five targets in just about half the games that he played in. This guy is a true threat out of the backfield. He's so quick. He's so powerful, even with a 5'9", 215-pound uh, frame. So he's a little bit smaller, but he's got plenty of uh, weight to him, You know, 215 pounds. Th- that makes us to the 5'9", doesn't really worry me. If he was 5'9", and 190, I'd be a little worried. But at 215, not worried about him all um, at all. This guy really knows how to break tackles, too. Last year, he's not just a receiver. He's a runner as well. Ran for over 1,100 uh, 1, yards last year at 6.1 yards per pop. Also missed, calls 62 missed tackles forced. Mike, that was up there uh, near the top of the entire nation. Uh, this guy this guy is hard to tackle. He is fast. He's quick. And he's a great receiver. And in the modern NFL, I think Ashton GT is going to be a really good running back. He might, he's not going to probably be the workhorse at the next level. Yeah. But I think with his ability and ability to be more than just a receiver, I think we could see him be a very productive fantasy running back as well. Uh, maybe not deserving of being in the, the top half of the first round because of the volume. But if he goes to a team where they're going to use him out of the backfield, we know that running backs who can catch the ball. Often, oftentimes are the most efficient for fantasy football. Mm-hmm. And Ashton Genty could be one of the most efficient running backs for fantasy football um, starting just next year. I think he's a guy where, like uh, an A-chan or a Gibbs, uh, he's very efficient with limited yeah. touches. That, that's the type of player that I see for him, where he yeah. doesn't need to be the RB1 in an offense. He doesn't need to be taking those ugly carries in the fourth quarter of a game or at the goal line, and he's still going to get you 10-plus points on average on a weekly basis. So I love that. i um, excited to see what he does this year. And let's finish it off with the number one tight end in the class, <laughs> and that is Benjamin Urasek from the Georgia Bulldogs. If you don't know this name, get this name in your mouth, unlike T.O. would want you to do. Ben Urasek could do everything. Unfortunately, last year he could not stay healthy, but he's in Georgia now. But Ben Urasek is a strong route runner. He's a very physical, physical specimen in this, the middle of the field. He will straight up maul people when he has the ball in his hands, which his hands are very soft, by the way. I saw him run more routes than just your basic tight end routes, little dump offs, little outs, all that good stuff. Um, so the route running is there. The footwork's there physicality is there he's not the fastest but he's fast enough for a tight end so when you're when you're looking at tight ends like oh he only ran this yes well he's also massive so um compared to a wide receiver he looks slow but he's fast for a tight end that's what matters i think all you really need to say about ben urasek is he transferred up from stanford to georgia yeah he he did be a pretty damn good player to be able to do that especially to the georgia tight end room which is already chock full of talent and you know what? Honestly, even if with the injury, if he would have came out last year, he would have been probably the tight end too, after Brock Bowers. I think. Just I mean, and I like JT Sanders, but I think he's better than JT Sanders, personally. Um, I that's Ben Sinnott as my tight end too. Just so you know, I think. Yes. Sorry, I forgot about Ben Sinnott for a minute there. That being said, hey, if you want to support the podcast, patreon.com forward slash dinosaur rewind. If you're in the five and ten dollar tier of that, you could hear our bonus Patreon podcast. And during the college season, I'll have a Ben Urasek tracker going so you can see what he's doing every week. I did it last year. I'm going to do it again. Uh, the JT Daniels tracker, that's going to be gone. I will find another obscure player to track every week because I love being tortured for some reason. If you want to support us for free, you can uh, like us on Spotify, like us on YouTube, and whatever you do, wherever you watch or listen, please subscribe and give us a nice five-star review. So until next time, for Nate, I'm Mike. Thanks for listening, everybody.